Matthew chapter 27. Come on. Verse 45, from noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Here, Jesus takes on all of our sins. There's darkness from the beginning of time to the end of time, Alpha and Omega, and all the sins go back in time to this moment. People can't even see. And then at 3 o'clock, it all goes into Jesus, and he is separated from his Father. And so he cries out, cries out, Eloi, Eloi. Uh, here, his intimate relationship with God has been separated. Mm -hmm. It's been cut off. This is what kept him going, what with, was his intimate relationship with God. And so my question for you is, how is your relationship with God, your intimate relationship with God? Look at Matthew chapter 7. Come on. Come on. In verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. It's not... Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? It's Lord, Lord. See, in the Jewish custom, saying the person's name twice is an intimate thing. Mm. And they're saying, Lord, Lord, we were intimate. We had an intimate relationship. And he says, no, you were evildoers. You practiced sin in your life. Therefore, we did not have an intimate relationship. Jesus dies on the cross, cries out, Eloi, Eloi. <coughs> intimate relationship. Wow. Mm. And we've got to deal with the sin in our lives if we want to have an intimate relationship with God. Look at Luke chapter 13. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. It was an intimate situation with Jesus, this city. Intimate. Syracuse, Syracuse. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, 
you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. Church, this is Jerusalem, Jerusalem. This is what God has given us. The heavenly Jerusalem, it is us, those of us who belong to the church of the heavenly realms, to Mount Zion. Do you understand what he has given us? Jesus looks at Jerusalem and he says he wishes he could gather Jerusalem together and take care of them. Is that your heart when you're at church and you see someone's missing or you see someone that's down? Is that your heart? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, my church. I just want to gather you together. This is an intimate relationship um, that you would have. And we are to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that for your brothers and sisters? An intimate relationship with the church. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's nothing dirty that the world gets in there, the intimacy. No, 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 intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. You can have intimate relationship with your brothers and your sisters. Yeah. Do you have that with your brothers and sisters? The title of my lesson, mm -hmm. just put your name at the top twice. Mm -hmm. David, David. Andrew, Andrew. Whatever your name is, put it up there twice. That's the title of the lesson. An intimate relationship with God. And this is leaders meeting, all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and so we're going to look at the seven times leaders were called out twice. Let's start with Abraham. Genesis chapter 22. These are the characteristics that you need to have as a leader that has an intimate relationship with God and an intimate relationship with the church. Verse 11. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham! Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. My first point is sacrifice. You cannot withhold anything from God. This has got to be your heart. You got to be willing to give up anything, understanding that on the mountain of the Lord, in his church, in his kingdom, uh, everything is provided for us. Uh, and so quit fighting with whatever you're fighting with. Uh, and this is a time of year that your mind starts fighting with you. Missions. You, you just have a hard time with it. Uh, if you're like me. <laughs> and we've got we've got to not withhold anything from God. David, David, don't withhold anything. I'm going to take care of you. Uh, you've got to have the heart to sacrifice. Um, Jacob, Genesis chapter 46. Of course, at this time, Abraham was nobody. But God said, you're going to be the father of many nations. And so the intimate relationship leads to something great. Mm -hmm. Genesis 46. Verse 1. 
So Israel set out with all that was his, and when he reached Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob, here I am, he replied. I am God, the God of your father, he said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again. And Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. Fearless, my second point. you got to be fearless. If you have an intimate relationship with God, you're going to be fearless in the mission of going into every nation, knowing that God is with us. God is with us to build the church that goes into every nation. Amen. Uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 3. Verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, uh, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land into good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt." My third point is you got to be a gatherer. you got to understand the mission. Jesus is calling us to go and make disciples of all nations, to gather with him. This has got to be our heart, to bring those who are enslaved to God's mountain, the church. This, this has got to be your mission. You've got to be willing to sacrifice everything be fearless and gather. 1 Samuel chapter 3. This is great day. Amen. It's the Bible. First Samuel chapter 3. Verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel, Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me? But Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me? My son, Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You call me? Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at 
the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from the beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God and he failed to restrain them. Therefore I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel laid down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered him, Here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. And he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And Samuel's word came to all of Israel. Student. You've got to be a student of the word. A intimate relationship with God on your responsibility, your responsibility is being a student of the word, getting in there, uh, learning these things. I just, what I'm teaching you, I just learned mm. in the last two days. I thought of Martha, Martha, and and I ended up with this whole study. Wow. Uh, and I believe God revealed it to me. I'm like, wow, every one of these people went from nothing to something great when they had an intimate relationship with God. I didn't know that saying their names twice meant an intimate relationship. I just studied it out. And so it's very encouraging to see that no matter how old you are, 57, <laughs> that God can continue to reveal himself to you if you are a student. And you ask God to teach you. Ask God to help you understand the word of God. And I believe that was his heart. He started an intimate relationship with God at this point. Luke chapter 10. Verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. <clears throat> Imagine speaking to Jesus that way. Ooh. Verse 41, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taking, taken from her. You know, there's several ways you can look at this, because Martha isn't mentioned ever again. And so, either she repented and <coughs> became like her sister, or this is the polar opposite of Mary, and Mary was honored throughout the Bible. Jesus appeared to Mary first when he resurrected. Um, either way, as a leader, we can't get upset. <laughs> And we can't get distracted. Uh, those will take you out of being able to leave. You won't be able to serve. When you're upset, I'm telling you, uh, in any situation, but like when my wife and I are not, 
let's just say we're upset at each other. <laughs> let's just use the Bible words here. When yeah. we're upset, mm -hmm. you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. like, no. You're paralyzed to do anything. Yeah. And so, being distracted, being upset about many things, is the opposite of being a leader. Mm -hmm. If you want to have an intimate relationship with Jesus, you got to get rid of those things in your life. Because you can see Jesus wants the intimate relationship. She knew at that moment when he said her name twice, this was the desire of Jesus, to have an intimate relationship with her. That's pretty radical. And so for us, that's got to be our heart. Look at the title of the lesson. This is God speaking to you. Levi, Levi. Intimate relationship. And we have to have the heart understanding we are nothing without God, but if we have an intimate relationship with Him, He's going to do great things through us if you have these characteristics. Look at 22. Verse 31. Simon, Simon, Jesus says, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I pray for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. When you have an intimate relationship with Jesus, Satan will sift you. There's just no way around it. If he's not sifting you, you don't have an intimate relationship with Jesus. But the goal is once you get through it, to take care of your brothers and sisters. We've got to be shepherds that strengthen our brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. Final one, Acts chapter 26. Uh, for Samuel, it was student. For Martha, oh, I'm sorry. For Martha, you got to be Christ-centered. Christ-centered. you got to focus on Jesus, not on all the problems. And, and uh, for Simon, it's family. got to be family. Acts 26. Verse 14. We all fell to the ground. I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the, against the goads. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant, as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and, all, and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. Preach. You've got to preach. To be a leader, you've got to preach repentance. Repentance. True repentance that is visible, that people can see their deeds by their repentance. This is a, a, a leadership quality. Uh, you've got to sacrifice, be fearless. You've got to be a gatherer, a student of the word, Christ-centered, family and a preacher that preaches repentance. <sighs> Say your name twice in your head. What's God telling you right now? What's he saying? He's, he's getting you to do something. That's what's awesome about having an intimate relationship. It's different. What he's saying to me is different. But it's meaningful something to me and I have to make a decision 
I have to make a choice. Do I really want this intimate relationship with God? You gotta deal with your sin, shepherd your people, and go after these seven characteristics in your life. That's the challenge this week. For the church, we need more studies. When we have opportunity to set up study, we've gotta set it up. We've gotta get up to 50 studies. Um, for the guys, I appreciate Andrew came up to me, do you need anything today? Uh, I appreciate that. I've been hard on Andrew the last two weeks. <laughs> I've been on him. And in every area, he's repented. Come on. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to lose him. As soon as I say what I'm about to say, I'm going to lose him this time. <laughs> and you've, you've taken it. You've taken it. You've grown. And I super appreciate that. You gotta have the heart to preach repentance in the brothers and the sisters in your life. Um, they need that. They need that. We have good-hearted disciples. If they don't take discipling, they're not good-hearted. But that's not your fault. Mm -hmm. It's your fault if you don't preach repentance. Mm -hmm. Don't help them to be more like Christ. And so these are the characteristics. You gotta be willing to sacrifice and everything. Be fearless. Be okay to have those uncomfortable conversations. Be a gatherer, uh, a student of the word. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, this Wednesday, I'm going to hear some brothers preach. They have to dig into the Bible and learn. It's going to be awesome to hear what, what's said. Uh, we've got to be true family. It was great to see today. I saw it. Yeah. I, saw, I mean, I had a like a 40-minute conversation with Jamika. <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. Jamika's awesome. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to have it. She was just sitting next to the AC. And I just sat next to the AC, and she was there. And then we just had a great conversation. It was like the Holy Spirit, you know, mm -hmm. put us together. And I just want you guys all to have that, have that family with each other. And we got to be fearless, be willing to preach. But I think it starts with number one, Jesus on the cross died for our sins. Just because we say, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean we're going to make it. we got to deal with the sins that we're practicing. If we continue to practice those sins, we do not have an intimate relationship with God. And so let's start there. Let's deal with those issues, and then let's work through it. Uh, and that is my lesson. We have 15 minutes. Any thoughts, any comments? Um.